Hi guys, well, hi guys, welcome. So in this video, we'll find out about the ROC curve. So we are using Excel sheet because it's a good tool to visualize the data and find out more about what is in the Y axis and X axis and what are the terminologies we use. So let's see. So here we have the same data, which is diabetes data set where uh, one is when a person has diabetes and zero when a person does not have diabetes. So this is the diabetes probability. So you can see that um, it's already a sorted data. So I've already sorted it. So the higher probability like 0 0.86, 0 0.87 is provided to the person who has diabetes, right? And if we go down, if we go down, so most of them are zeros and these are predicted as zeros because they have a low probability. So as we go down, it the zeros are more and as, as we go up, we'll find ones which are more in numbers. So usually what we do is we say there is a cutoff and usually the default is 0 0.5 so sometimes it works so let's see what happens if we take different cutoffs so this is 0 0.5 and i'm gonna introduce two few more terminologies which is one is positives and another is negatives so let's make this one positives so here the positives are person who has a diabetes and here the negatives are person who does not have diabetes so as we know um, the class which is more important uh, that is labeled as positive classes or one so here this is the case now here we'll find out the predicted value if the cutoff is 0 0.5 okay so let's find the predicted value i mean the predicted classes if the cutoff is taken as 0 0.5 so we'll use the if function if the probability value is more than or equal to the cutoff value then it will be considered as one else it will be considered as zero and we'll, we are going to drag the formula entirely to the entire column so above one uh, above 0 0.5 it will be considered as a person having a diabetes and uh, below 0 0.5 it will be considered as no diabetes so let's scroll down and see if this has worked yes we can see it has worked so below most of the points are 0 and you can see above 4 point, uh, 0 0.49 0 0.50 it is considered as 1 right so now if we change the cutoff to 6 again the same thing now let's check what will happen if we check we take the extreme value so if we take the cutoff 0 0.9 that means everything is classified as zero that means everything is classified as no diabetes and if we take as 0 0.1 everything will be classified as one that makes sense right above 0 0.1 will be all one below 0 0.1 will be all zeros so these are all ones and if we go down there will be very less zeros right i mean only the lower part few of them will be zeros so let's keep it 0.5 as of now and now i'm gonna find out what are the positives actual positives in the data so that means the actual diabetes person so which will be count so um, the actual diabetes will be the sum of this this column right because it's a binary classification and 
we have the classes ones and zeros so the sum will be the actual positive classes so we take just the sum and shift so this is the actual number of people having diabetes and we'll take count if uh, this is the range and here zero that means we are counting whoever has does not have diabetes in an, in the actual label column that means in the actual training data there are 3635 that is 3635 data points which are negative now if we find out the rate that means diabetes rate if we find out it will be equal to divided by sorry this one plus that means um, out of 126 people has diabetes and rest of them they don't have this is the rate so let me introduce you guys to a term which is true positive rate also is equal to true, true positive divided by positive true positive is basically the model which has classified the person as diabetes who actually have diabetes and p is basically the number of positives use the count ifs sorry count ifs function in excel and find out who has diabetes and our model has also predicted them as diabetic patient and it has to be divided by the actual number so if our cutoff is 0.5 our true positive rate is 53 percent that means 53 percent of the time the model has correctly predicted the person who has diabetes if we increase this cutoff let's see what happens see the true positive rate decreases if we go to the extremes again true positive rate becomes zero because this value is becoming zero everything above 0.9 will be considered as one but the probability we don't have anything above 0.9 so everything will be zero now if we change it to three true positive rate is 78 percent so this is a this is a trade-off which we have to be very careful it's like a hyperparameter tuning when we are modeling uh, so let's keep it 0.6 so our stakeholders will be very happy if um, our true positive rate is very high if it is above 90 95 percent but if we decrease the cutoff more it's 85 percent so um, true positive rate is very high but then again the model is not a very perfect model let's see why so there is another thing which is called as false positive rate so false positive rate is something which is defined as false positive divided by the negative that means um, the model is predicting few data points as positive that means person having diabetes but in actual the person does not have diabetes so this is the ratio fp by n n is the negatives this is the total here so let's see what this is if we use count ifs and if we take this value here we are considering it as zero but the model has incorrectly classified them as ones and it has to be divided by the actual number of negatives 
So if we are uh, putting a cutoff of 0.2, then TPR is 85% and FPR is 32%. That means um, the model is able to classify uh, the person who has a diabetes uh, correctly 85% of the time. But however, it is misclassifying few of the uh, negative instances as positive as few of the non-diabetic patients as diabetic again this depends on the business situation like uh, if you want to put more weightage on 85 uh, percent on the tpr rate then we'll be considering this value then again for example uh, if a person who does not have a diabetes and the model is predicting as the person is having a diabetes it's not i mean what what else could be done uh, you can go for the test again but it will be crucial if a diabetic person is being classified as non-diabetic i mean that it will be more critical than the first scenario right um, so it clearly depends on the business situation which one you would want to increase and which one you would want to decrease uh, so clearly there is a trade-off what we can do is uh, to avoid classific uh, to avoid any further confusion regarding the cutoff i'm going to take cutoff of 0.1 to 0.9 and see what happens to the tpr and fpr rate uh, what i have done is i have taken a cutoff of range 0 to 0 0.9 so if we increase this to 0 0.9 then you can see all the classes here are zeros and that means everything is zero right i mean we don't have any value above 0 0.9 which has to be classified as one so fpr is also one tpr is also one when the cutoff is zero let's see when the cutoff is zero let's see what happens yes tpr is one and fpr is one makes sense right we do not put a cutoff of zero right everything will be one so these are the values if we are using different cutoff from zero to 0 0.9 and these are the fpr and tpr range so if um, cutoff is 0 0.1 then tpr is 94 percent and fpr is 49 percent and if the cutoff is 0.2 again we do this it will be 85 and 32 so like that i have calculated all the fpr and tpr so let's plot it and see uh, what curve we are getting so tpr is usually in the y axis and fpr is in the x axis so um, i'll be discussing more about tpr and fpr in the coming theory part tpr is also known as the sensitivity and fpr is one minus specificity so all this will be discussed over the next video um, let's um, plot it as of now So you can see, if I move the curve here, you can see uh, this is 0, 0, that means the cutoff when 0 0.9 FPR and TPR is 0 and cutoff is 0, uh, TPR and FPR is 1. So this point cannot go beyond 1 and it cannot go beyond 0. So this is our model. More it is towards the Y axis the better our model if we are taking svn or logistic regression i base the more this roc curve is towards the y axis the better our model is so in this case uh, our model is doing pretty good and the area under the curve that is auc cannot go beyond one because zero to one and here also this is zero to one so it cannot go beyond one and if we are drawing a line from 0 to 1, that means it's a very random model. Uh, it's not a, a good model. Uh, so anything AUC below 0 0.5 will be considered as a worst model. It should be above 0 0.7. That means the area should be more towards 
0.98 or 0.96. So this is all for uh, TPR, FPR and ROC curve. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this video and if you have any questions I will be more than happy to help you. Um, and also like, share and subscribe. Please do share it with your friends whoever needs help in data science topics. And uh, of course the theory part of this video will be up soon and I'll also be demonstrating everything in Python. So keep watching. Until we meet next time, thank you so much.